forever. Dog. When your first choice is a big old bus, you turn around and boom, you end up with us. Our number is 213-536-9180. Our email is sloppyseconds at gmail.com. Now on with the show! Are you ready Woo. for some sloppy seconds, you stupid little fucks, you nasty little fucks, you dirty little fucks? Welcome to Sloppy Seconds with Big Dipper and Meepaw. I'm Meepaw, and that's Big Dipper. Hello. Uh, hello, I how s- are you? I, I'm great. I saw someone post online today that tagged us. They were doing something about ways to call people fucks that was completely unrelated to us. I guess, like, they, their friends and them, I don't know, have whatever. They were like, these are all the way you can call someone a fuck. Fuckity fuck, Mr. Fuck, Mrs. Fuck, you know, like, whatever. And then was like, and shout out to Sloppy Pod for um, the all-inclusive All You Fucks. Yeah. Which I was like, oh, yeah. Hey, All You Fucks. Well, I didn't want to start with, like, hey, ladies and gentlemen, because I was like, oh, God, no. What is that thing? Hey, you got. What is that from? Like an That old... is from the Goonies. Oh, the Goonies. Hey, you guys. <laughs> oh, my God. Wait, so I was thinking about this today, Meatball. Yes, Because I know Diva. you very famously talk about how much you hate doing drag. Yes. Uh, and how you hate doing the thing that people love you for. Yes. When was the first time you, like, got up in it and you felt like, Oh, I'm beautiful. Like, I'm the one. Like, this is my destiny. Wait. Okay. Well, I mean, I think my first time in drag, because everyone who does drag, like, their first time in drag is, like, the most delusional you've ever been. Like, (laughs) I was in a gold, like, spandex caftan and, like, big blonde hair, and I thought I was gorgeous. But I look at the pictures, and I was like, I'm hideous. And it's, like, what I made that t-shirt of. So that's like the first time that I felt... That was the first time where you yes. made that t-shirt of? Yes. That was the wow. first time I felt like gorgeous and glamorous. And I remember I, I, I didn't even paint myself. I had my friend Joe Nivens paint me and it took like three hours. And then we went to the offbeat bar. That took three hours? Yeah, because we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> we literally... He was not... He's not a makeup artist. He was like a oh, visual okay, artist. Okay. And he was like, I don't understand how eyeshadows work. And I was like, you can do lines. You can do my mug. Like, I just like... <laughs> full confidence just like just do it and then like glued down my eyebrows and it was the chunkiest but that was i mean i felt so glamorous yeah i can and I tell was so sweaty you could you can see that you feel that way in that photo yeah it exudes it expensive. exudes glamour but the visual is sort of a dissonant yes experience but, okay well, when was the first time that you felt all like sexy or whatever on stage <laughs> it took me a long time when i first started performing i would have anxiety um, because about the I w- performance or about your body shape? Never really about my body shape. Oh. It was always about like remembering the lyrics because I didn't oh. want to pull. You know, like we've all gotten up and been like, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's you know, it's listen, it's a little bit easier if you're lip syncing than when you have a live mic and then you forget the lyric. You can't that just is like true. You can't do like a spirit finger over you. Oh, wrong, 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 wrong. <laughs> So yeah, but it took I think it took like 6 to 9 months and then I finally when I was confident in my words, then I was like it was when lyrics to a song became muscle memory mm-hmm. so I could actively think about dancing or performing or doing something else while while I was on stage. That's when I started to feel really confident because I was like I'm attempting this with a strategy and, and- then it made me have more fun. But do you ever feel like, because I feel this way, I was like, the muscle memory of like learning a song like that and being able to do it on repeat or whatever doesn't come from just practicing it. Like, you, no, you have, have to, to perform do it, it. Yeah. in front of an audience. So, like, yes. unfortunately, the first time you ever perform it, it is never going to be as good as the last time you do it. That's you know? the truth. Well, All I right. want to get, I want to hear this answer from our guests. So, yeah, let's take I do a too. quick break. I think it'd be a great question. Quick break, and then we'll be right back with our special guest. Don't sleep on me. I'm asleep right now. Are you? I feel like sometimes when you do this, you're just fully asleep. Uh, Well, now I sleep better. Because Helix sent me my own mattress, and it's fucking comfortable, and I love it. Tell me about Helix. Helix makes personalized mattresses made right here in America and shipped straight to your door with free no-contact delivery and free returns and... 
a 100 night sleep trial. To choose a mattress, Helix made a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete and matches your body type and sleep preferences with the perfect mattress for you. Yeah, and it only takes like a half a minute to fill out. If you like your mattress that's really soft or firm, or you sleep on your side, or you sleep on your back, or you sleep on your stomach, or you sleep really hot, or you sleep with a Helix, there's a specific mattress for you and everybody's unique taste. I took the quiz and I was matched with the Helix Plus, uh, which is a mattress for people over uh, 250 pounds. You almost said 400. Well, you know, if there's two people in the bed. Oh, baby. And uh, uh, one knocked his head and the other said, roll over, roll over. How's that song? But I love my mattress. You can definitely (laughs) jump on the Helix Plus because it has extra springs in it because you're fat. That's right. I got the same one, but they have so many different mattresses. They got the Dawn. They got the Dust. They got the Midnight. They have soft, medium, and firm mattresses. Whatever you need, they got you, baby. That's right. So just go to helixsleep.com slash sloppy. Take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that'll give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10-year warranty, and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it. (laughs) Trust me, you will. So right now, Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders. Whoa, get up to $200 off at helixsleep.com slash sloppy. Sleep tight. Yeah, I mean, why not get a new mattress now? We're in the middle of a quarantine. You want you want a roll nice, over, soft space where you can eat over, dinner, you can have lunch, you can do your work, the, you can podcast, you can do your makeup in, in the bed. In the, Bitch, just wait, stay is in that bed. the same tune to Liza, There's a Hole in the Bucket, to Ten Little Monkeys Jumping on a Bed? There's a hole in the a bucket wait. and the jump one off and they all rolled over and she got more water for the bucket that she put it in. And Liza was a lot to deal with. So they sent her on errands and she tried to fix it with straw. Um, This is the new lullaby. lullaby. We should leave this in because you could play that to fall asleep on your new Helix mattress. Bye. Okay, we are back. We're and back! Very thrilled and excited. This person has been on our uh, like our get our wish list for a very long time. Very long time. Yeah, we always were like, oh yeah, and then we'll get we'll get landed. It'll happen. We'll get. <laughs> It'll landed. happen. We'll get landed. We'll get landed. <laughs> and so, then um, we got landed, and then because of Dipper, <laughs> as you heard on the Tuesday episode, oh, we had to no. keep changing Drag when me. we had landed, and it was a confusing mess. And I'm just glad that we're here now. Here we go with an legend, an icon, an incredible visual artist, winner of season three of the Boule Brothers Dragula season three. It's Landon Sider! Yeah! Ow, 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 ow. Are you guys? <laughs> have, have you ever done a Goonies? Uh... I do. I have a sloth uh, cosplay character. Oh, that nice. I, and it's... One of the stupidest mixes, and I love it because I love stupid. That's why I love Meatball so much. <laughs> uh, of course, you dip her too. Your Thank little you. boy is like one of my favorite things ever because it's just so stupid yes. and so amazing. Anyway, side note. Yes, my, my, my um, sloth cosplay is just like the stupidest thing. It's like when he's talking about baby roots, I cut into Justin Bieber's baby. But then yeah. I overlay him saying, baby, woo. Like, it's just the stupidest <laughs> thing. And it's on YouTube. It's on the Mickey stage. So it's a good video. Um, and I think I might bring it to one of my digital shows. It's just like so much, so much work to get into that makeup. Um, oh, yeah. Like that. But now that I'm thinking about it, I think I might I might bring him because it's stupid. So well, stupid. and you, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, other people go like, maybe I'll do that makeup. You're like, you need to devote like a whole day to that makeup. Yeah, because <laughs> like, you legit. don't pl- you don't play around. <clears throat> no, I, I don't. I, I I did that to myself though. Do you know how like <laughs> I know it's so stupid because <laughs> I came out like trying so hard to like because you know any any um 
I hate using the word minority, but any minority that has to like prove themselves in a world that they don't, so that other people tell they don't belong in, you have to work triple, quadruple as hard. So I was doing this bullshit stuff right at the gate, and now people have expectations of me, and it fucking <laughs> sucks. I can't it, just be lazy. <laughs> well, that's a great lead into some of the stuff that we wanted to ask you about. I wanted to ask, like, when was your first time performing as Land Insider, and like, how did that come about? And then how was it accepted? Like, was it accepted at all at the very beginning? I I have been very fortunate um, to be amazing the whole time. Um, go off. Just go off. <laughs> yes. I relate. Um, I, <laughs> yeah, my first time was in February of 2009. And it was approximately six months after my last radiation treatment. Um, from if you watch Dragula on Netflix, you'll uh, hear I have my story is is in, in regard has a big my drag story is directly connected to my own cancer battle story, um, and so about six months after my last radiation treatment, I hit the stage for the first time. I had been working on my makeup for like a week. Or I'm sorry, a couple months <clears throat> trying different stuff because there's there's nothing out out there on YouTube to really guide me. I just kind of right figured yeah. it out. Um, I went out and I performed two mixes that I had made because I'm dumb and I did mixes on my first time out. <laughs> like intense, intense storyline mixes. Like, oh it's, my it's a lot. gosh. Um, Where was it? But at Hamburger Mary's in Long Beach. Okay. okay. On open talent night that Jules had once the beginning Tuesday of the first Tuesday of every month was open talent night. Um, so I signed up, went on stage, and my boobs popped out. Uh, so that was fun. <laughs> I bounced with time. a bandage, and I didn't know what I was doing, obviously. And so I, the end of my first number, I'm like celebrating at the end because of the story I was told, telling, and uh, my boobs popped out. So that was, oh my uh, goodness. That was good. But it was great. It's it's a personal story too because my first time in drag performing was the first time me being in public after um, fighting cancer. And I did a public wow. fight on MySpace at the time. Um, and I was always posting positive. Every day was my mission to be positive through it. So I would post a positive um, mantra or just something to think about positivity every single day. Right. Um, and I garnered a lot of support. And so when I had my debut, the whole club was packed with people who were just there oh. to celebrate me and then to watch my debut so it was uh a night i will never forget it was emotions and energy and what a way to like welcome to to pop my dry cherry yeah that's and so incredible so you heard us sort of talking about that other question in the beginning uh so from from popping your cherry to then like feeling your most sort of like alpha powerful performer what like when when did when did you feel like your most your most in your fullest form? Um, probably a good like seven eight months because Halloween season came around and okay. I was already doing like um spooky stuff even before Halloween. But like once that one hit, I'd already been preparing my shit for like six months shocking and shocking wow. that you're prepared and <laughs> doing homework oh. <laughs> and so i'm jealous I of that killed it. Uh, i fucking killed it and i remember just being like okay yeah this is <laughs> this is my jam this is where i belong for sure i kind of knew that already but the confidence Right. Yeah, there's no feeling like knowing your shit before you go on. Like, we were Ugh. just talking about, like, never, like, you have to work up for it. But sometimes there's some numbers where you just have wanted to do it for so long. It's been playing in your head for so long, and you just go out there and slay it the first time. And that is, like, mm -hmm. there's no better feeling. Oh, I still, even some of my, even the digital drag stuff, like, stuff that, because I've been kind of rotating through my repertoire from all my years and right. stuff that I can't yeah. take on tour because they're, like, too big or just too monotonous. So I've been bringing it to the digital drag stage. And some stuff I'm doing for the first time. And, like, I have to feel myself, like, 
all through the night because the first four hours, I cannot get the words or the character out because I've never performed it. And I'm so glad I'm not doing this on a live stage because I fucking suck ass right now so bad. (laughs) I feel that too. Like I'll be halfway through recording a song and I'll be like, I know it was okay, but it wasn't good enough. Like I can just feel it. Like you just know it wasn't right. Mm -hmm. Uh, Right. How do you train your brain to get around that? I was going to say, so then you just throw up meatball yes and then i just vomit and then it works but then you just sell it and then you say here's my bomb here's my and then you do some roller skating tricks where you can see your hand and your boot turning the skate that's yes. <laughs> fucking favorite i was shit. just i was just obsessed with like old i still want to do it i used to do it on stage i would have pinche dress up as my body double i just love mm-hmm. old movies where the body double is clearly like it's a white woman and then all of a sudden it's a black woman and then it's a white woman again like i just yeah. love that inconsistency yeah. and i want to do a whole video on it maybe i will anyway you we should. were just i love it we were talking about um how you you there was no blueprint before you there was no makeup there was no YouTube videos on how to do the makeup that you do. Well, let's did- qualify. No no sort of traceable or public blueprint. Yeah. yeah because yeah, yeah, there yeah. have been drag right. king performers for a long time. <clears throat> oh, but oh, of course. Because of, you know, the internet and Instagram and whatever, yeah. the sort of uh, prominence that you hold now is like a new mm-hmm. endeavor. Yeah. Right. And there were some... Um, like female to male uh, makeup transformation videos, um, but it wasn't like drag makeup. It was yeah. much right. more passable. And that was the kind of drag that I started out doing. It wasn't, um, there were a lot of different kinds of queens already because they had been celebrated and taught that you don't have to just be a pageant queen. You can be a campy queen. You can do all these different kinds of drag to be a queen. But when I started, really the only kind of drag that was, uh, celebrated in the kingdom was like male impersonation drag, which is passable. Mm. So you want to mm. be sitting, the goal was to sit at the bar and have a guy hit on you because they think you're a guy. Um, right. Mm. And I, I, I slowly and quickly uh, learned that that wasn't um, impressive enough for me because people didn't see how much effort was going into my makeup because I passed so much like a dude that they weren't celebrating me the way I deserve to be celebrated. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I know so that then to I be started true. to slowly <laughs> I slowly started to paint heavier and more um really like just deeper and stage, you know. I grew up in stage, I was performing on stage, so I knew the concept of painting from the back row. Mm-hmm. You have to have like I played an old lady and I have those wrinkle lines were in black, you know. So I, I got it. I understood what was needed for the stage light. So I just um eventually adapted my more natural look into more like yeah, paint, paint, painting. It's so a full what? Mug. What kind of performance were you doing? Like theater, like as a kid, like theatrical performance, mm-hmm. acting, like that kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, theater, um, junior theater, community theater, whatever uh, was musical funny or cheap. theater. Musical theater. Huh? Mm-hmm. Ah. I, was, I, was actually, I I was a <laughs> classically trained soprano for. <gasps> A few years I was uh, singing, yeah, opera and like arias. And I even, I, uh, my, one of my go tos was Ave Maria at like weddings and funerals uh, and shit. I get, I get booked to do that shit. Uh, um, <laughs> so have you I, ever I been booked a... to perform in Wicked? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Have you seen Wicked? I would love to be, I, of course I've seen Wicked, yes. It's, what is it's... your favorite part of Wicked? Um, I think just the, uh, man, what is my, that's, that's a loaded question. Is it when but she flies like, on the broom and goes, ooh, ah! <laughs> that's <laughs> my favorite part. Of course, that's always one of the favorite parts. But I think <laughs> my favorite part of any musical is sitting in the audience and hearing the overture. I think just getting that, that energy and like, and hearing all of the songs in the overture that you're, and you're, that that uh, all of the the foreshadowing that if you've never seen the show before, or if you already know it by heart, you're already like anticipating, when am I going to hear that part in the show? That sounds like it's dramatic. I don't know. I think the overture and setting you into the mode is always kind of like my favorite part of any show. <laughs> the I'm overture is like, like the that. OG Megamix. It is. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It really is. <laughs> what if it's I just did that wicked like overture? Every single song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
What, Meepo? What if I just did the Wicked Overture and like acted out the play as it was uh, changing songs? Please. I'm waiting please. for please, the please, drunk please. version of Wicked where you play all the characters. Wicked 2. I'm waiting for Wicked 2. I'm waiting uh-huh. for the Overture where you uh, just lip sync to the sounds of the instruments. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole, there's a whole, back, uh, back, yeah, back. exactly. <laughs> there's a whole bevy of entertainment that can come out of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I'm curious because obviously, uh, well, let's talk about Dragula because um, uh, we both you, been there. Yeah, you both have been there. Yeah. I believe your two experiences may have been slightly different. Yeah, uh, one of us was good at it, and one of us was bad. Uh, <laughs> Someone here won. <laughs> you won at life. Ah, da! Hey. <laughs> no, um, did you like just love doing Dragula? Because when I saw you there, I was just like, oh my gosh, like it's an actual living legend on the show. This is yeah. gonna be huge. <laughs> You're sweet and accurate, but uh... <laughs> like day um, one, I was like, well, it's Landon's. Okay. In retrospect, I, yes, I love doing it because in rep- retrospect, I won. But, like, doing it fucking sucks, you know? It's like, <laughs> you're fucking going through hell. It's hard. They do, it's it's supposed to be hard, you know? Yeah. They're, they're not just, like, I mean, the belays were, are, um, have proven themselves to me to be, uh, like, actually, they care about us on set, especially, like, they check in on us and, like, make sure we're, we're fed and things, but like, and you hear about other, other hosts of other reality shows don't care. <laughs> or well, your name, so, well. um, <laughs> so like that part, like I, you get, okay, they still have, you know, uh, a broader picture in mind, but they're there to torture us. They're, they're torturing us on purpose for the good of the show and for the good of their own ent- entertainment. Like, you know, yeah. like they would be, we, we would find out after that during like close set where we couldn't see outside the set we were in, they would be on the other side listening to us and like watching us on the screens personally. They wouldn't wait until later to rewatch the footage. They would be right there. So right. You, you know they're like giggling at the torture that they're watching us go through, but it's all part of the fun of the show. You sign on to that show knowing you're going to be t- yeah. like physically and mentally tortured. So it's right. not like, oh, it's a surprise. It was, it sucks. But, you know, it's long days of being in a comfortable drag and yeah. My favorite part was just watching all the bullshit drama go down. Like, we didn't get to see that on our season. And, like, watching y'all get painted together and just seeing you reacting to everyone else's <laughs> petty drama is, like, the... I think there's, like, a highlight reel of it online somewhere. Of it's just I, you just, like, 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 looking a, around. Like a, a, yeah, like a montage of all my different reactions of, like, watching all the pettiness. Yeah, yeah. it was so good. <laughs> what was it like just being in that room just, you know, because... Uh, I'd say that you were probably more um, experienced. You'd been doing performance longer than a lot of the people there. So you've just, you've already seen it all. So you've already know how to react. But what was it like just seeing it in person? All I kept thinking was, no shade, but all the shade. Um, (coughs) You are desperately trying for camera time. And I don't need to because I'm going to be here the whole time. Yeah. You know, so like. (laughs) Like, go ahead and keep getting all your camera time now because obviously you're just trying to get camera time. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, my God. Drag but, but that's what I think was, like, so, so endearing and lovable because about you on the show is that you not only were presenting amazing art and slaying any time you were put to the challenge to, like, create looks – but also you um you like had an opinion about what was going on but you weren't forcing that opinion down anyone's throat mm-hmm. and you you were like listen i have to right. sit here and make this you know fucking beard and all these other things like yeah. you're being stupid but i'm not going to waste 20 minutes arguing with you i've got work to do yeah. and as like a grown up right. person watching that show i was like okay that's how i would play the game like yeah. you're here to do something and- at the reunion, when I get asked why wasn't I involved in it, and when I my answer that so many people reach out um, and talk to me about whether it's like meet and greets or just in DMs or comments on my posts, they're always bringing up that when I talked about energy, 
like move them or they connected with it. And it's like, I don't have time to waste my energy on that when I have so much going on in my own personal space to worry about my own, my own performance, my own looks, everything. And like, there's <clears throat> every time there was something that went on in the, in the boudoir that I disagreed with, or I felt like I had an opinion, I would speak up and I would mm-hmm. say things all the time, but my storyline in the end got edited in a certain way where they wanted to kind of keep that, I guess, more of my personality towards the end. And, you know, when I was first watching the first half of the season, I'm like, I had a whole conversation about this. I said some really funny things about that. Oh, and I got interesting. So I'm like, Where's my personality? And then, it, and then you see it, and they all have it's it's still it's a reality show, but it's still an yeah. edited reality show. So you know, you give up your control. I gave up control. Right. Must be hard to get the hero edit, huh? Oh, it's <laughs> it's so, seems so difficult. It seems very oh. difficult. <laughs> I am curious, did you, um, because you also on the show, you know, on the show, I've known about you obviously for a long time. We've shared stages Years. in the past, interact. Mm-hmm. Uh, but on the show was the first time I understood the pun of your name, which you talk about as like a little bit sort of a slow burn. Did you have other uh-huh. options for a drag name ever? I did, but I smoked way too much marijuana to remember any of them. <laughs> Well, because Same. Meatball Meatball and I both suffer from being named, our stage names are also other things in the world. Like, if you just Google There's Meatball. The, I see the vape. <laughs> I see the vape. There you go. <laughs> I saw the vape and it was sucked. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm a professional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, like, if people search Land Insider, you 100% come up. But if Correct. people search Meatball, it's just going to be... <laughs> I cooked a ball of meat. Yeah, it's a lot of meatballs. Yeah, a lot of IKEA. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I, I, your, your branding is smart. Your name is clever. I just like. Can you tell us sometime that you failed or like did something? Yeah. Have you ever um, done poorly? (laughs) Oh, a hundred percent. My wife likes to remind me of that all the time too. She keeps me grounded for sure. Uh, Oh, yeah. You know, with every success are like at least a dozen failures, you know, so you I only grow because I fail. I don't I just don't post that shit online. Yeah, smart. I I constantly try makeups, even like recently. I you may see it on my story because I like I just painted for four hours. I'm not going to at least show something. And yeah, nothing that I'm going to post on my feed or like actually make like a like draw attention to. Um, I try stuff all the time. That's how I learn. And all those times are shitty looks or they're just not, uh, or shitty lip syncs. Um, my home bar sees all of my, my fails. <laughs> they're the ones that get to see me like literally stop and laugh at myself because of how bad I'm executing something. But, <laughs> okay. you and, know, and where and your home bar especially is. Especially because I'm, I'm like, often I'm, I'm prop heavy or I have gags long before Dragula where like, obviously gags are celebrated on that show, but <clears throat> I've always had props. I've always had gags. I've always had something physical or a change to like draw your attention or, a, or a, a reveal something. Um, it's not the same dress over and over and over and over again, like Meatball does, but it's still like something <laughs> like... <laughs> Between this episode and the Lady Bunny episode, I might as well just quit drag. Hey, it's, no, that's been it. your wish. I, I know, I'm, tr- it's, I'm trying to get out of the game. Your stage dress reveal. Yes. Uh, your stage dress reveal is fucking gagsy. It's so stupid and I love it. Um so I always have shit and stuff always goes wrong. The first and second times I perform a mix or a number that has gags constantly goes wrong. So mm-hmm. yeah, I fail often. What is what is your hair. home bar so we can come watch you fail? Oh, uh, <laughs> Hamburger Mary's in Long Beach. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I host a a drag a monthly drag king show there. Well, right now we're on hiatus. Right. But, um, yeah. As is the entire drag world, but yeah, so I host a monthly drag sh- a king show there that um, uh, I usually try out all my new stuff. So 
they get to see me. They get to see the potential of some of the things that the rest of the world gets to see. Right. That's, they'll right. say that. Mm-hmm. That's like precinct for me. They get to see every one of my tour numbers before it like leaves and gets better. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's take a quick break. And then when we come back, we can talk about the new state of drag, which is just the internet. Arizona. Right. Arizona. The new state. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. <laughs> Well, you know what it is. If you're looking for ways to take care of yourselves and your mental health, this fall, why not try BetterHelp? You know, this world is a stressful place. Ain't that the truth, Meatball? Yes, especially right now. It is very stressful, and I am very nervous, and I just want to feel like I am calm in the world, and I'm not. (laughs) That's right. Well, you know what we're going to say. BetterHelp connects you with professional counseling done securely over the internet. That's right. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. It's not a crisis hotline and it's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online and you can start communication in under 48 hours. There is a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor, and you'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions from home. That's right. So you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable, germ-filled waiting room as <laughs> traditional therapy. That's a job. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change your counselor if you need a better match. Yeah, so visit BetterHelp.com slash sloppy. That's better H-E-L-P. And join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. That's right. In fact, okay. Okay, Miss BetterHelp. <laughs> okay, Miss BetterHelp, because so okay, many Ms. people Betty. have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. Our listeners get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash sloppy. That's better. H-E-L-P dot com slash sloppy for 10% off your first month. Stay safe and healthy, everyone. One of my friends actually used this and they love it. They love BetterHelp. They love Go it. Go off. Go off. Okay, we are back with ah! our amazing guest, Landon Sider. And, um, Hello. Let's talk about digital drag performance because you... Your performances translate amazingly. Thank you. Yeah. I've been... It's It's been quite the undertaking, especially when DDS was every week. That yep. shit was like, I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't... I was just nonstop working. I was at my computer finalizing mixes, then preparing because I didn't understand or know green screen for the first like month, so I oh, was wow. hand painting my my backgrounds but and cutting I've them out. Loved those; those were incredible. They were so good. Thank you, but I don't it's have the much. energy <laughs> or the time to focus on that anymore. So now I'm just like, if green screen is still hard as fuck, and all the yeah. editing I do is still hard as fuck, but it's not like it doesn't. I, um, smell like glue in my house. My wife is like, are you fucking doing that shit again? Or painting uh-huh. or having to go, <laughs> you know, like it's, it's a lot when you live in a one bedroom apartment. So <laughs> when you're trying yeah. to like make these like whole sets for your little living room window. So yeah, right. it can get, it was really, really tedious. Um, and I'm proud of those. And it led me into uh, the kind of more digitally edited videos that I'm doing now. But it's been really fun. It's been really fun to, like I said, uh, bring characters that you won't really see me go on tour or um, just uh, bring ideas or concepts uh, that you can't really do on a on an actual life stage. Or you can, but you need like a $20,000 budget to execute. So like, you know, because like I would love to have shit rain on me and I like, catch it and make a yeah. gag out of it. Like, oh, that's funny. That's funny. That's funny. And it's just like <laughs> right. all the props magically appear in my hand. Yeah. But I, have, I can only do that with with quick editing on in my little living room. So it's been it's been fun. It's been overwhelming. But I love that you would also do numbers where you would play multiple characters, each mm-hmm. with 
crazy huge oh, makeup looks. So it's like look. you can't do that yeah. live. We can't see Landon in no. five different looks all in three minutes in a live show. Right. And so that was right. so exciting those, to see. A lot of those multiple character things are often because the way I perform that number to a live audience the person that you see me as a different character is actually the punchline that I'm landing on or I'm poking fun of an off. Because, you know, live drag is interactive and you're, yeah. and you're, you're uh, crossing the fourth wall and it's improv and you're fucking with people. And, right. like, I would pick someone and land that joke on them every time to make them the gag. And I didn't have that option with the digital drag. So I would just paint myself and then make a new kind of... Uh, create a new dynamic or energy between those two characters, but the way in life they translate differently. Yeah. So on uh, the schedule of uh, television production, I assume they're like a little delayed with the next season. How long have you been the reigning champion? <laughs> Oh yeah. Uh, ha- Halloween it'll be one whole year. And but I bitch was assume, a champ. Bitch yeah. was reigning for over a year too. I think it's just how it goes. Yeah. It's sort of like a it's, it's an 18 month position. <laughs> <laughs> which is which I appreciate uh, not just because I get to reign longer but um because, <laughs> which rain. I do like that's a, that's a fun little thing. But um they're just not interested in putting out content that they're not 100% happy with. Yeah. They're going right. to do it the way they want to do it. And if it takes longer, then it takes longer. You know, they know they're under pressure and they, the pressure's on to continue to uh, lift the brand and, and show what their potential has always been. Every year it gets bigger and better. Um, and so they have the pressure on. So they have to be their, their own everything. Right. And, yeah. They're just doing it the way they want to do it. So I figured. Fuck also, it, it's that's... like it's COVID and like why complicate things right now? Right, exactly. Like, why yeah, not just yeah. wait until mm-hmm. things are like more normal? I completely understand right. that. Yeah, their, their podcast said that they were going to announce, um, they teased the listeners or get out. Uh, auditions were open at the end of August, but that didn't happen. So obviously, there's other things that are going on and, and taking their time, and we don't know what the end is in sight. So, right. you know. None exactly. of us know what's going on anymore. No. But do you think Whoop. that you'll, because um, I know Executive Suites is now doing an outdoor brunch show. I know Hamburger Mary's may not have like the lawn space, the outdoor space, but are they working on something? Do you know? Like a live yeah, show? Yeah, they have outdoor brunch shows, actually. Uh, the Suites is oh, doing, yeah, I think, Barbatol's two or three always nights. There. Mm-hmm. They're doing like uh, two or three nights a week. Uh, the Suites are doing like a nighttime like, dinner type show. And then Mary's is doing a dinner show a couple nights a week and brunches on the weekends. They have an outdoor um, parklet space. And then they have like a little, and the WeHo, they have like, they took over the parking lot that was next door. Um, So they're doing the damn thing. They have to wear masks. So I'm not, uh, as you know, I've, I've, um, I've been known to do uh, backflips and, and splits and things in my past. No, I, no, I don't do that. Um, I'm taking a, a physical break from my acrobatics. And, um, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm not a dancer. I'm mm-hmm. not a physically entertaining person. Like, I'm entertaining, but I'm an actor. I'm a lip sync artist. So once you cover half my face, it's like... Oh, Where's the... I would, I would feel kind of... Em- not embarrassed for them because it's so fun to watch me watch them because they're entertaining me. But I don't feel like I would be entertaining enough to take that space from someone who does feel like they can give that to the audience. So mm. um, I just I I haven't signed up for any of those yet because I just I, I have to be able to have what we perform without a mask. That's just my style of drag. I feel the Mm -hmm. same way. Like, I think that something I really admire about you is, like, your ability to use stillness when you're performing and just your face. And, like, you're really Mm -hmm. delivering a performance through the makeup, through all of it. It's, like, emotionally there. And I just don't think that that... I mean, I don't do it to that degree of you, but I feel like my face does a lot of the work for me. And if I'm covering it with a mask, I'm just, like... What are we looking at? I put too much Botox in my forehead for it to move. <laughs> You're not seeing anything. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I thank also, you. And I miss yes. tips. I miss taking tips from people. But, you know, it could just be like the UK where no one tips anymore. It could be, but then they have to pay, pay the booking. Pay more, yeah. Booking right. fees have to be higher. Yeah. Which, I unfortunately, s- is hard to do right now. 
I saw on because uh, Delta Work is doing a lot of gigs out at Executive Suite, and, and I mm-hmm. saw the queens actually carry a net, which I think is yeah. like so fun. They carry this like long a butterfly net. It's a it's butterfly, a butterfy 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 net. net, and they uh-huh. walk around and they, it's sort of like a collections plate, like in church or whatever. And they walk around <laughs> and they're sort of. Tithings. They're coy with the net or whatever, and they walk up to a table, and then they sort of hold the net out, and then you drop your money in the net. And they're wearing the, like, full, like, the see-through, but it's like a welding shield, you know, like the full face thing there. (laughs) And they're just, like, walking with their net, collecting their money, and I'm like, girl, bring that net backstage, I'm gonna shake up my can of Lysol, spray all that money down, and go to the bank. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I, and some people, some audience, like they leave nasty reviews or they post shit, and they're like, they're talking shit about how drag queens are doing that. But like, what the fuck do you <laughs> what expect? Are we supposed to be You're doing? going to a drag show during a global pandemic, and you expect it to be back to normal, and you're and you don't understand why it's this weird new way. Get the fuck out of here! Like, it, those are also the same people who don't know anyone's names who are on Drag Race. So right, like Ugh. their their opinion doesn't matter. Listen, I saw a drag queen in New York eat a, a chicken tender off someone else's plate during her drag number. No Ooh. masks in sight, honey. Excuse me. Ooh. COVID. Mm-hmm. She looks candy. That, and, that yeah. drag, and, that dra- and that drag queen, Candy Muse. Uh, no, I was going to say, and that drag queen's name is COVID. Candy Muse. No. COVID. Oh, sorry. Like, do, 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 give it to me one I, more time. Give it to me one more time. <laughs> and that drag queen's name is? Candy Muse. No. Oh, did I do it again? <laughs> Off again, again. <laughs> How dare you? Wait, okay, so and we do this. And are getting smaller and smaller. Like, yeah. some, uh, beginning they were the full chin, face, the and chin then they were like half a face, and now they're a little chin, and, this is just... the, and they open their mouth, and you can see the top teeth over the mouth. Like, what's the point right. of that <laughs> Oh my god! I will not lie. I do have those little plastic masks for when people come over to my house. I make them wear them because I like to That's see people's cute. faces. And it's just like I don't know. I also make people get tested before they come over. See, it's smart. Yeah, show off that yeah. test result on dick. your phone. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So speaking mm-hmm. of dick sucking, our our <laughs> the segment that I want to get into now is a segment that we call fuck talk. Fuck talk. Now I made a yeah. note on the outline that said, "Is it?" my own personal like bigotry and misogyny that I feel like I need to tiptoe a little more with our guests who aren't overtly just like gay men when we have the fuck talk. Cause anytime we have someone on the show who isn't just like a faggot, I'm mm-hmm. always like, are you comfortable if we do our segment oh, called yeah. fuck talk? Like, can we talk about your sex life? So I'm just like, I'm trying to call in to myself to see yeah. why I have a hang up about it. But also now it's time to talk about sex. So Th- thoughts, <laughs> thoughts on that. Sex, baby. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, I think, I think uh, I probably would feel that way for anyone who doesn't overtly talk about sex. Right. Uh, like in yeah. general, anyway, you would be a little bit more like uh, concerned or more not concerned, but just Timid. careful. Yeah. Yeah. I guess just to respect, yeah, because there are plenty of people who talk about sex, plenty of uh, AFABs, just, or anyone that will just be open to talk about it. It's not something that I talk about um, overtly, um, mostly because I've been married before I started. I've been together with my wife before I started drag, so uh. it's never been a part of my character um, because of the to co- to protect the privacy of of my life, my, my off stage yeah. life with my wife, and she doesn't like to be in the limelight or on in, in, on stage. Um, she doesn't I, doesn't enjoy it, so I just right. kind of like keep that more on the side. But I love to talk about gay boy sex. It's one of my favorite things to talk <laughs> about. It's so funny, like because I have a fascination with like blowjobs or just the penis Same. and what it does in general. <laughs> <laughs> because I've I've never given one. Uh, I've only held a, a hard dick outside. Like I held his dick outside of his pants, like because we were making out. And I just I'm like I guess I'll touch. It's up, so I guess I'll touch it now. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> oh, through um, the pants. <laughs> Through, like outside, yeah, it was through, not not inside. I would I didn't put right. my hand inside. It I was thought just, he yeah. pulled his dick out of the pants and it was hard. And then no, he took, no, that's no, what no, I, I do it even... outside. Got it. Uh, right. No, no I, and I love it. Like, I love backstage when um, the queens uh, just like whip their dick out and they're like, <laughs> and, 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 and I'm like, ah! like I get it's, so excited. It's I, always I such an experience okay. seeing it, it come is, out of like, the tape. 
and it can be totally inconsiderate and like totally like wrong in any other given circumstance but a drag backstage is just like inherently dick heavy you know yeah. so like <laughs> and the dick jokes are funny jokes so you can't deny it or like the way it looks or the way you can pull it and in, in one direction <laughs> and bend over and you're like what the fuck is that you know it's fucking crazy <laughs> i love it but but i have like like a scientific um like I want to explore like what it actually feels like and what I actually have to physically do to get one to squirt. So like there's this funny like concept that I have where it's almost it's like a glory hole, but not really because I don't want to hear them. I don't want to hear a guy make sounds like at, at my touch. I don't want to know that I'm making him make those sounds like I'm uh... still a lesbian enough where like mm, I don't want to hear it and I don't want to see his face. I just want to like scientifically poke at it and like (laughs) (laughs) that's so funny I mean I feel like sometimes I want to do that with people too just because I'm like I don't want to deal with you just give me that dick wait do you have any um like what what, what's the street term for like what you stuff with don't uh, don't don't people call them packers yeah uh, it's a packer yeah I I use a packer um I was gifted a, a packer from the same company that from uh, the finale episode in in my filth, uh, the the sex toy. Oh. My, my my girlfriend and my uh, the sex toy is from a company named Real Doll, and they're in San Diego, and they let me borrow a fucking know, ten thousand dollar sex toy. What? Yeah, and they did not. Like, I couldn't tell them what it was for. And so me trying to, like, coyly ask to borrow a $10,000 sex toy was, like, the oddest conversation to have. And just, like, trust me. Tr- just trust me. Just trust me. You're going to enjoy gonna love it, guys. what it's for. But um, they also gave, uh, gifted me um, all of those sex toys that you saw, like, the, the, um, the sleeve with the teeth. The yeah. vag- vagina dentata. If you look at the at my filth episode, you'll see a table and it has a bunch of sex toys yeah. on it. Um, <clears throat> and they also gifted me a, pa- a couple packers. So I've they've they kind of try out different packers and they give it to me, see if I like it. Then I give them feedback on what they can use. And their their goal. Um, they also make breastplates, and their goal was kind of to. Uh, I think Raja was gifted a, a really nice uh, breastplate from them. Um, kind of for a trans experience, just to kind of give a more like realistic look that could not so much um, uh, be replace what they already have, but just as another option of, of right. different things. So, yeah. and I also use are, socks. Are they good sometimes I don't titties? Pack. I might want to get a pair of those. I really yeah, do think yeah. I want one of the ones that goes up to my up my neck. You know the real yes. good looking ones, and the nipples like 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 just totally up and yeah. <laughs> crazy. And you're like, Boop. <laughs> yeah. the f- the feedback that I hear about those two is that like it's really challenging to make a version that like zip or velcro or something in the back but it is so hard Mm. because you either have to put it on before you beat your mug Mm -hmm. or stretch the neck so far so that when you place it over or um, you just have to be like felony dodge or a skinny white bitch who does not sweat and can like wear heavy clothes all the time my biggest not fear is sweating? like that doesn't make sense to me i yeah. don't get how sweat. people like, don't what? sweat or they'll be like oh yeah i, I just sweat like on my legs I'm like what do you mean you just sweat from <laughs> your legs my whole lower back and under tits is wet <laughs> not just my legs that's crazy uh victoria elizabeth back uh vicky makes makes um uh, oh right she makes really too, good ones a wonderful yeah i think um bitch has a pair or two from her mm-hmm. too and she can make them without nipples too. So if you want just like a smooth look, mm-hmm. Because I'm a I'm a I'm a free the nipple supporter, so I don't show my my male presenting nipples anymore either. Even though I can I can post a picture of me in a piece of fabric over my body with male nipples and be fine, even though I look like a girl. But because but I can't That's as so an actual crazy. girl. So so I decided to not show my male presenting nipples anymore either, just to kind of like. To support, like a silent protest kind of yeah. support of the free the nipple movement. Yeah, I love that. Oh, what are your thoughts on the term AFAB? I heard you use it, and I know a lot of people don't like it. What what is like what is a good alternative for us to use? 
Because now I don't like calling people drag kings anymore. I just want to call everyone a performer. I mean, that's what everyone is. Yeah. Um, but oh. I do still am proud to be a drag king. Right. And I'm still proud to be a woman. And I'm still proud to be um, assigned female at birth. So those are all my personal uh, choices of terminology and pronouns and things to use. So like in drag, I'm, I'm all he, him, his, but outside of drag, I'm, I'm she, her, her, her. She, <laughs> I'm not, I never she, her, hers. I always, yeah, <laughs> she, him, her. <laughs> sure. I mean, I don't, I, uh, I don't actually care too much for the slip ups, especially um, like backstage. I, I am completely comfortable with a feminine vernacular of this wig is a her, this microphone's a she, like, oh, that pencil, give me, uh, give that bitch to me. She's, she's nasty. Like I, I know, and I'm, I'm comfortable with that. So like. <laughs> give that bitch to that me. Pencil. She's nasty. <laughs> um, I, I'm okay with it. But when it comes to referring to my art or referring to my character, it's, it's a he, he, him. And I, even though I'm not personally um, offended when it's not used properly, I still go out of my way to take up the space because there are other uh, trans and non-binary folk out there who don't have the platform to com- complete or to consistently be able to uh, correct people on that. Mm-hmm. So. I will constantly correct people on the pronouns for me to use he, him, his when you're talking about my drag all the time. Yeah. Even to the point where I can get heated because I'm doing that for like the trans and non-binary people that I'm kind of have the responsibility to represent now too. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know how to suggest another term for AFAB um, because it's still a personal choice. And I think I, I understand the points that are made against it, but for me, it makes sense um, to identify with that. Yeah. Yeah. Make sense? And we yeah. Were... Can I say fish? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Hollow spoke up for a lot of people who feel that way and, and did a wonderful job of, um, ex- uh, explaining that. But unfortunately, uh, like I said, things get edited down and, yeah. um, uh, reactions aren't, always the way we want uh but i completely even in the in that room i was standing up for her and i was having the conversation with her too but <clears throat> it's always made me feel uncomfortable uh it's been a term that's been used against me by cis straight like men um as a way to try to make me feel less than or to mm. be embarrassed or ashamed or something so i know it to be something that has been used against me and i have like been a victim of that kind of, of, of abuse from, mm-hmm. um, you know, that the cis, the cis experience. Um, <clears throat> and so when like, uh, gay men or even trans women use that term, it's kind of like, well, and I know the dick and the balls can smell. I understand it. I know that you can yeah. go well, funky. Yeah. I, I understand where that kind of connection to it comes from, but it's still using a term that was used against us. Right. And I have never appreciated it and I've never liked it. And it always has made me cringe um, every time it's used backstage or on stage or whatever. Uh, but I always just kind of thought it was something I had to just get used to. And even though my my insight and my feelings were always, I was never comfortable with it. So when she brought it up and she like defended it, I was like, thank God, I hope this stays in the show. And then it did. And then she got death threats. So it's so it's so crazy that like people can come at people who aren't ready to listen to the unexperienced that they're not used to. Yeah, right. And yeah, it's it's interesting. I was recently um, introduced to like a group of people um, at like a very obviously like queer environment. And, um, you know, like I walked in and the host was like, oh, you know, this is so and so. And uh, he uses he and his. And it it set a precedent that as we went around and sort of, you know, like, <laughs> yelling names through masks everyone sort yeah. of everyone said their pronouns and what was what 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 was noticeable about it is it was very redundant everyone in that environment uh. was also using he and his but 
the fact that that step was taken sort of alerted everyone in the space to either take that tool home with them or to just be aware that like in this environment, we're, we're not doing it for one individual person who maybe is different than the rest of us. We're normalizing that idea of just really easily yeah, saying he and his. And, and it sort of took me aback because I was thinking in my brain, I was like, wait, everybody here, like, I don't, I I literally had this, like, internal struggle because I didn't, like, clock any, you know, like, visibly trans people or any sort of gender non-conforming people, but I also knew Mm -hmm. we were in this really queer space, and, like, like, so it began an internal dialogue that I really was sort of grateful for in that moment. Yeah, I'm I'm grateful for that, too, to know that that's happening on a regular basis, because I'm hearing more and more stories of that, and that's really cool. It is. I've converted to just calling everyone they or by their name it's just mm-hmm. so much easier than having to like stumble over it and like you right. just like make someone uncomfortable on accident because it is also right, a ton right. of new information if all of a sudden you like have to learn a bunch of new information yeah in order to yeah. to like safeguard and respect people if you're not ready to consume all of that is to just use right. their name or they and them and then as as you're able to sort of digest all the information around you you know you can use appropriate pronouns that people uh want i think uh with any language any language is hard to learn any mm-hmm. new language is going to be difficult and it's going to take lots of practice and lots of work but right. It's still our responsibility to respect that. And when someone tells you their pronouns, to work hard at trying to use them. Because, yeah, the the they is the generic term to kind of introduce or walk into an environment with. But once, once like a, I tell you that my pronouns are drag or he him, I hope that you you use he him because I'm mm-hmm. I'm proud of using those pronouns. So you using they is still misgendering my pronouns yeah. you know so like but again it's a it's a good introductory to walk into a space to be generic to wonder and then get the information and then apply it um but the thing that with with languages being difficult to learn as an adult children learn them so easily and yeah. that's why people in other countries are taught three or four languages growing up and mm. us we're kind of focused on english and then we're lucky if we actually get a couple of good Spanish teachers or French teachers or something in high school, but um, if we well, with teach Trump's kids new right education the plan, to use, um, we'll be so lucky if us. we learn any fucking languages. Uh, talk, mm. now, now is your time to throw up. Now it's time to, for the meatball mm-hmm. puke, puking yeah, session. Exactly. But um, yeah, I think if we just make sure that we're using the language as much as possible and teaching kids, we're gonna we're gonna educate our youth to grow up and using uh, proper pronouns and inclusive language. Speaking of kids, like, what was it like reading to children in full <laughs> drag? It was it was fun. It was really fun um, because I was like a uh, I dressed up as Frankenstein, but like a cartoony version. Yeah. So I was still trying to like be my brands, but and like have the kids sell it. And it wasn't your Halloween; it was like in the middle of springtime or something. So uh, it was fun to see them get excited about something like that, and then still interact with them at a kid-friendly version but i cannot i cannot not curse like i had a couple <laughs> moments where i had to like oh oh shit oh shit oh shit i, said, <laughs> I would say oh shit at cursing um and then and then make uh adult like jokes like i would read a book and i would totally connect some innuendo sexual innuendo or something oh, no. in the line and i was like you parents know what I mean. And then I would go back and say, like, I can't, I can't not comment like innuendos, even with children around. It was, it was fun though. And it was for a, a Jewish community center. So it was oh, even lovely. more more interesting because they were celebrating, um, I forgot what holiday, but they were celebrating a holiday at the time. So it was a uh, really, uh, really cool cultural experience to have witnessed and to familiarize myself with a little bit more than I'm used to. And now nice. those kids are going to expect Frankenstein at every one of those holiday events. Yeah. <laughs> right? At one every suit boy. coat, we want a Frankenstein. That's what we're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> one um, little boy uh, oh, yeah. came up to me and he was like, he like touched my leg and like kind of brushed down my leg. And I was like, oh, what? oh he's all, you're, you're kind of like handsome and like totally threw his little hip out. And like, Ooh. he was like seven. And I was like, 
Oh, okay. I see your kink. You're going to be one of us. You're definitely going to yeah. be one of us. Like, he found his moment. Day, he found his like, end right there. The dark side. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Well, Landon, thank you so thank much you so for much. joining us. We are so thank happy you. to have you with us on the podcast today. Uh, where can people find you on the internet? And do you have anything coming up for people to tune into? I do. I have, you can find me on all social media, uh, Land Insider, yes. L-A-N-D-O-N, Cider. And my website is landinsider.com where I have um, some merch t-shirts up uh, for sale. You can book me on Cameo because I Ooh. like talking shit for money. Um, and so you can see me on Digital Drag Show uh, twice a month. I'm a regular cast member there. And I am going on tour in the UK and Ireland at the end of January and February with whatever version of drag that they're allowing. I'll be I'll be there with no matter the circumstances. So I'm um, going on tour with Jackie Cox, which is like a huge weird combination. Me and Jackie Cox, it's like I know I saw that. <laughs> what, what an interesting combo. We are, we're so excited. We're actually planning a duet. So that's oh, gonna yeah. be on to I feel like be that's gonna slur. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because I'm a camp I'm a musical theater person. So I'm right. like upper alley too, you know? So. Yeah. Will you like have to like fly to I don't know the Bahamas first in order to get into the UK? I, like, aren't we travel banned right, right now? Like, what? I know there has they have. I mean, Adore's doing it. I think right. for Halloween this this year. So I know um, it's going to be interesting. But some sort of a like workaround said, um, will be happening. <laughs> some sort of a workaround, yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening to Sloppy Seconds. You can follow us on Instagram at Sloppy Pod. You can send us an email at Sloppy Seconds Pod at gmail.com or call in with your fuck talk story to 213-536-9180. Don't forget to subscribe. We have new episodes every Tuesday and Friday. And, uh, you know, hope you had a good September. Yeah, and send us, uh, just uh, <laughs> write a review. Write a you review. You know we got five stars? Oh, yeah. The, they're always like five stars, kick Dipper off the show, Meatball's the best. That's like what <laughs> the five star ratings are. All right. Well, lovely times. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. doodle doo doo forever dog. Oh. Sloppy Seconds is produced by Forever Dog and Moguls of Media. Mom! Hosted by Big Dipper and Meatball. Mixed and mastered by William Pitt. Executive produced by Willem Belli, Alaska Thunderfuck, Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. Our artwork is drawn by Christian Cimarroni. And our theme song was written by Mike Malarkey.